In this video, I'm going to talk some about mask, which is probably one of the questions that I get most in Photoshop, period, is uh, what is a mask and then how do you use them? Uh, they come up in a lot of different ways in Photoshop, and because that, they can be a little bit confusing because there's no one really clear way to talk about a mask. The best way to, to explain one is to demonstrate it, so I'm going to show a few of the different ways that a mask can work. Now, uh, I have a photo brought in here. It's just a just a one photo layer. This is what we're going to be working with. I'm just going to name it down at the bottom as main. And I'm going to grab the eraser. Uh, I was messing around with my brush settings earlier, so I'm going to clear those up, get a nice hard brush. Now, again, I'm always going to come back somewhat to the subject of destructive and non-destructive editing. If you haven't seen that in one of the other videos, please go back and look. Uh, but it comes down to whether or not I affect the actual layer itself or if I just do something that can then be reversed. So uh, masking is one of those things that's easy to demonstrate that way. The more I talk about it, the more complicated it is. But let me just show you. Now, if I'm wanting to erase part of this photo and I take the eraser and I just run through and cut through it, uh, I have effectively damaged this layer. It is not whole. Uh, this is not something that's easily reversible. Of course, I can always do a Command Z, but even after a few steps, I start to lose that uh, because that's just something to keep you ma from making immediate mistakes, just taking a step or two back. What if I get part way down this and I want to adjust it? What if I get part way down and I want to restore some of it? So erasing part of a photo, uh, even if I'm doing it for some type of artistic effect, may not be the best way to go about it because it is destructive. Another way to do it that can be reversed is through masking. Masking is a kind of a complicated process when you're doing it from scratch. Uh, some layers come with mask automatically. We're going to look at those in a minute. And there's some other masking modes that you can use throughout. But basically it's a way of targeting a specific area or in a f or masking something out so that it appears that it has been erased when it actually has not. So let me demonstrate. Down at the bottom of the layers palette we have this one icon that is a rectangle with a circle in the middle. If I hover over it it says add layer mask. I have my image selected so if I click that you'll see an additional thumbnail appear next to the layer. You'll also notice if I go over here that my brush color in my color picker has automatically changed to black. What you should see it do is either go to black or black and white. The reason being that if I have this mask selected, all I can paint on there is black or white. I'll explain why here in just a second, but notice that I can select either the image thumbnail or the mask thumbnail. I want to make sure the mask thumbnail is selected. See my colors come back if I click the uh, image thumbnail. Now if I have this set to black and I'm using a brush, then I can go in and I can do almost exactly what you saw with the eraser. It's only slightly different because my brush is slightly different. But I'm using the black to erase parts of the image. However, because I'm doing this on the mask, which you can now see the thumbnail down there change because it's showing what is masked out and what is not, I can also go back and restore it by switching my brush color to white and continuing to paint on the mask. So essentially the mask is telling it what can be visible and what can what has to be deleted but it can always be reversed and restored. So this is the essence of what a mask is. The ways that it can be used are enormous. There's tons of different ways that you can use a mask. I'm going to, to show one of them here. All right, we've done this in the past before where uh, you go in and create a solid color layer and I'm going to make it a nice intense blue, maybe a little bit more in the direction of a cobalt. And I'm going to set the blending mode of that to overlay so that we can kind of affect our image. Now whenever you do something like this, this is a uh, forced color harmony, so it it will do the trick, but it's a little bit heavy-handed in the way that it does it. I believe I described it in the last video that I showed it as rudimentary, which that's probably accurate. But if you look in the layers palette, you can see that it comes automatically with a layer mask. If I click that, my uh, colors over here will automatically revert to white and black. 
and I can do it the same way as that one I created custom only in this situation I'm gonna make the brush a little bit larger and I'm also gonna reduce my brush opacity so that it's less intense and then I can do something like this where I'm able to brush out little bits of this blue and add spots of warmth throughout the image this helps the figure pop out from the background this helps me make it seem less intense less heavy-handed in the shadowed areas I'll go ahead and leave most of the blue so now I have an interesting look if I toggle that on and off you can see how it creates a drastically different look but it's not as strong it's not nearly as demanding on the eye as the original was so this can be really effective way to use mask if you look down at the thumbnail that represents the mask you can see that it's not totally black it's a little bit gray a little bit smoky and this is a good way to use it you can do the same thing for example if I create we'll create a levels adjustment layer and then I'll crush the blacks really far not really far but something like that so you can obviously see the difference though I've crushed it this one also comes with a layer mask so I'm gonna do the same thing there except I'm gonna go in and wash out the background some what this does is it gives me enhanced contrast on the figure versus the background so the blacks are crushed more on the figure and it makes it pop out from the background even more than it did before this is another way that I could use the mask to my advantage on one of these adjustment layers. So now I can toggle that on and off and you can see the difference. So there's lots of different ways to use them. There's one other form that I want to look at. I'm going to go ahead and remove these two things. And this is actually a mode that allows you to paint in a mask directly and it's down here below the color picker students always have a ton of trouble remembering where this is so I try to really stress it if I click that you'll notice it changes my colors here again and it takes me into what is known as if I hover over it uh, quick mask mode and right now because I have it indented it says edit in standard mode so basically I select it again to turn it off it's an on and an off button now what I do when I start painting with this I'm actually going to use a soft brush and I'm going to paint over my figure here it immediately goes to red I'm not actually painting red I'm not actually painting anything really I'm just telling it where to create a mask selection so I'm gonna go ahead and just fill this in softly I love soft brushes when it comes to photos anyone who's using a hard brush really needs to give a good argument as to why fill in all that with red and then when I hit the button again you'll see that it creates a selection around everything except where I painted in the red. Now if I do something like create a solid color it only creates a solid color within the selection. So I'll do essentially what I did in the beginning set it to overlay and I'm able to create an effect around something. So that's a few of the ways that you can use a mask. I, I covered putting one in custom using one that comes with an adjustment or fill layer and then using quick max mode which again is located underneath the color picker just a few of the different ways to use a mask it's still a complicated thing it takes a, a little bit of understanding of how they work and experimenting with them to get the results that you want uh, but knowing that they're there is helpful